Bandaging Bandaging is the application of a continuous strip of woven material used to wrap around a body part. Bandages are stripped of cloth used to wrap around a body part. Used to, used to secure dressing, apply and pressure and support wound. They are especially useful in injuries of the extremities. There are types of bandages. First is the ACE bandage or the elasticized bandage. This is a commercially prepared bandage of a woven elastic material that is capable of giving strong support. This is used for sprain, strain, and contusions. The second is the gauze. Soft. Gauze is a soft, porous, woven cotton of light, of lightweight that molds easily to body parts and used frequently to retain dressing. And the last is the self-adhering conforming bandage. It is a woven porous gauze that stretches, stretches and molds the body, contours and is self-adhesive. So next is the binders. Are designed for specific body parts that include slings, abdominal binders, chest binders, and P binders. Binders are made of cloth flannel or muslin or of elasticized material that are fastened together with a velcro so the purpose of these bandages is to keep dressing in place to stop bleeding by exerting pressure on the dressing to serve as tourniquet and to support an affected part next is to serve as a sling to fix and hold a splint securely to immobilize a part of the body to restrict motion to correct deformity so assessment you need to inspect and palpate the area of swelling you need also to inspect for the presence of and status of the wound note the presence of drainage inspect and palpate for adequacy of circulation Ask the client about the any pain experience and assist the ability of the client to reapply the bandage or binder when needed. Assess the capabilities of the client regarding activities of daily living. Circular turns. It is primarily used for anchor bandages and to terminate them. Hold the bandage in your dominant hand, keeping the roll uppermost and Unroll the bandage about 8 cm. Apply the end of the bandage to the part of the body to be bandaged. Hold end down with the thumb of the other hand. Encircle the body part a few times or as often as needed, making sure that each layer overlaps one half to two thirds of the previous layer. Secure the end of the bandage with tape or a safety pin over an, an injured area. Spiral turns are used to bandage parts of the body that are fairly uniform in circumference such as upper arm or upper leg. Make two circular turns. Continue spiral turns at about 30 degree angle, each turn overlapping the preceding one by two thirds the width of the bandage. Continue the bandage with two circular turns and secure the end with a safety pin. Spiral reverse turns are used to bandage cylindrical parts of the body that are not uniform in circum circumference such as the lower leg or forearm. Anchor the bandage with two circular turns and bring the bandage 
upward at about a 30 degree angle. Place the thumb of your free hand on the upper edge of the bandage. Unroll the bandage about 15 cm or 6 inches and then turn your hand so that the bandage falls over itself. Continue the bandage around the limb overlapping its previous turns by two-thirds the width of the bandage and make each bandage turn at the same position on the limb so that the turns of the bandage will be aligned. Terminate the bandage with two circular turns and secure the end of the bandage with a safety pin. Figure of 8 turns are used to bandage an elbow, knee, or ankle because they permit some movement after application. Anchor the bandage with two circular turns. Carry the bandage above the joint, around it, and then below it, making a figure 8. Continue above and below the joint, overlapping the previous turn by two thirds the width of the bandage. Terminate the bandage above the joint with, cir with two circular turns. And then, secure the end with a, uh, with a safety pin appropriately. Spica. The spica bandage is a variation of the figure of 8. It consists of ascending and descending turns that overlap and cross one another to form an angle. It is commonly used to bandage the hip, groin, shoulder, breast, or thumb. A 1 inch bandage is frequently used for thumb spica and a 3 inches bandage for a hip or shoulder spica. Recurrent turns, called the stump bandage, are used to cover distal parts of the body such as the end of the finger, the skull, or the stump of an amputation. Anchor the bandage with two circular turns. Fold the bandage back on itself and bring it centrally over the distal end to be bandaged. Holding it with the other hand, bring the bandage back over the end to the right of the center bandage but overlapping it by two thirds the width of the bandage. Bring the bandage back on the left side also overlapping the first turn by two thirds by the width of the bandage. Continue this pattern of alternating right and left until the area is covered. Overlap the preceding turn by two thirds the bandage with each time. 
Terminate the bandage with two circular turns. Secure the end appropriately. Triangular Arm Sling A triangular arm binder or sling usually applied as fully triangle to support the arm, elbow, and forearm of the client or to reduce or prevent swelling of the hand. Ask the client to flex the elbow to an 80 degree angle or less depending on the purpose. The thumb should be facing upward or inward toward the body. Fold the sling neatly at the elbow and secure it safety pins. It may be folded and fastened at the front. Remove the sling periodically to inspect the skin for indication of irritation, especially around the side of the nut. Straight abdominal binders. With the client in a supine position, place the binder smoothly under the body. With the upper border of the binder at the waist and the lower border at the level of the gluteal fold, apply padding over the iliac crest if the client is thin. Bring the ends around the client, overlap them, and secure them with pins or velcro. Place the top pin horizontally at the waist. Evaluation Evaluate the peripheral circulation of the bandage area. Evaluate frequently the skin and bony prominences for signs of impaired circulation. Documentation Document the procedure, perform any observations, and the patient's reactions.